Smart Animator is updated, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the new changes that I've made, and I'll also show you some of the behind the scenes stuff. And as always, if you have purchased Smart Animator or our Smart Tools bundle, then you definitely get this new upgrade for free. You can just go to ukrami.com and re-log in and re-download. And if you're new to this channel, you might be wondering, what is Smart Animator? Well, Smart Animator is a text animation tool that I created a while ago, and if you've done any kind of text animation in After Effects, you probably understand the struggle. It does take quite a bit of clicks to create something simple. And I'll walk you through the whole thing. So for example, let me show you what it's like without the Smart Animator. So we have this text right here. And what if I wanted to quickly animate this, like all of the words from the right side kind of slide in. And naturally I would just, you know, go over here and go to Animate, bring in the uh, Position Animator, then uh, maybe bring in another one, Opacity. So then I would set the default uh, position to something like 1000. It's going to start out here, set it to zero on opacity. And you're not done yet, so nothing's happening yet. So then you would go to range selector. So some of these things you kind of have to know uh, how to do ahead of time. So then you would go to advanced and uh, based on, let's do it words and then uh, shape. I'm going to set it to uh, ramp up and then set the ease low to 100%. And then you have to kind of know to animate the offset value. So then you would go to offset, uh, take your time to get to the beginning here, set it at like 100, negative 100, set a keyframe, and then go to one second, set it to 100. And essentially we have something simple here. Now this is just in animation. Now if you wanna do the same thing for out animation, you kinda of have to repeat the similar process. And uh, then if you wanna adjust the timing, you have to adjust the keyframes. And I mean, it can be a headache. I mean, especially if you have a bunch of those layers, you know, to adjust something, in one, you have to kind of go in here and navigate all the way to animator, position, you get the idea. So it it can be frustrating. So let me get rid of this and let me talk about the Smart Animator. Let me show you what Smart Animator does. Now, I'm gonna talk about the old version of Smart Animator first. We're gonna talk about that one and then I'm gonna introduce you to the new version and you will kind of see what changed. So the old version, which is Smart Animator 1.0, let me bring that in. So Smart Animator 1.0, this one right here. So here's what it looks like. We have the top buttons. Those are like, uh, this is to run the animator. This is to activate the motion blur, that right here. This is to activate 3D. That's to get rid of Smart Animator. So that's pretty basic stuff. But then the main stuff would be in here. So for example, to create similar animation that we just created, I would select the text and then I would go to position. I will set the X to like 1000 and then I'll copy this value to this one. I'll add negative value in front of it. So then I would go to opacity. So everything's kind of like in this drop down menu, right? The opacity, and then I would set it to zero and even easing, you can go to like easing here and set it to like zero here. So you do have some easing adjustment. You can adjust duration. So right now it's one second. Now, the way it works, as you can see, we have in animation, out animation, and that does it based on in points and out points of your layer. So right now it's set to one second duration. So it's gonna take one second for all of them to animate in and then one second to animate out. So one second right about here, will start here and animate out. So that's common sense here. You can adjust it between like seconds and frames, depends on how you work. And you can make it quicker by, you know, giving a smaller number here, you get the idea. So we have all these controls in here, so you can do it on the fly. And then once you're done, you just select the text and you apply it. Now you can apply it to one text or multiple text, doesn't really matter. And in the old version of Smart Animator, it would kind of make all these animators visible and then you kind of have to hide it manually. But I fixed that in the new version, you'll see. So essentially, it whatever you made here, and once you apply it, it create all these controls that are the same as here. So you can close this off and continue editing things in here. And that's totally fine. Remember, this is a script, not a plugin, so you don't have to have it installed to adjust things. So you can hand this project off to somebody else. They can open it up without having anything installed and they can still alter all the position, scale, all that jazz. So that's the beautiful thing about Smart Animator. It has all the controls that carries across all the projects. You can export them into Mogurts, which I do all the time. And uh, yeah, so that's Smart Animator. As you can see, if I preview this, it's working like a charm, animates in, out, and again, it does it based on in and out points, so we can kind of adjust the in points here and it will animate it. Yeah, it's very useful, it will save you a lot of time. So that's the old version. Now, let me kind of quickly show you some of the UI of the old version. So we have like the global buttons and local buttons. And what I mean by that, so like, for example, position has 
local buttons for the in, so I can reset this value by clicking on this reset. Boom, it will reset it, but only this position in, and the same thing for position out. You can also pull in. So for example, I'm gonna reset all, all of these using these buttons. So I'm gonna reset duration, all of them. When you click on reset, it will reset them globally. And so now, the beautiful thing about Smart Animator that if you already have it applied on the layer, you can pull in all the information. So what if I kept adjusting it in here, not using this tool, right? So what if I kept adjusting these values right here on position in and out, and I wanna keep adjusting these things, but in this tool, well, I can instantly select the text and then pull all that information into here globally. So I can say pull in in, pull in out, and it will automatically take whatever you had in here and just pull them in here so you can keep adjusting them. And once you apply, you can send it back. So I can like manipulate this however I want to, and then I can send it back, boom, to this. It will send it. So it's a great tool that works back and forth. And th these buttons will save you a lot of time. So again, you can reset locally, globally, and that's really it. That's what the old tool looked like. Now, let me show you what the new one looks like. So let me get rid of this. And instead of the drop-down menu, I kind of replaced it for icons. So for example, like position, scale, skew, instead of having it in a drop-down menu, you will have an icon for each one. And I used Illustrator to create those. So let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. And uh, right here. So for anchor, you would have like an anchor icon for position, like scale. Well, actually, I went with this one. As you can see, my thought process here, how I wanted to make this happen. So yeah, I definitely went with that one. So then we have rotation, opacity, like the checkers. Then we have skew. We have tracking. Now, tracking is a new feature that I've added. It wasn't there before. So you can animate tracking if you want. A lot of you have been asking for it. And then we have blur. So And then we have duration. So I considered creating like a settings tab and compiling a bunch of them. But I don't know. I'm just going with the duration and uh, I did put something else into this one. So order has some new things in there and then ease, as you can see, it's kind of like the graph curve. So that's where you adjust the ease. And uh, yeah, I also am thinking about doing some presets, which we'll talk about that later. Now for, instead of doing like the global buttons and local buttons separately, I'm just gonna use the same buttons in the new version. And I just have a, like a global and local button that you can quickly switch between the two. So let me show you what that looks like in After Effects. So let's go back to After Effects. And uh, in here, so this is what the old one looked like. Let's bring in the new one. So the new one is Smart Animator 2.0, which is this one right here. And uh, a lot of people ask me like, how do you dock these things in? So when you first open uh, any of my tools, it will be floating like this. But if you wanna dock this in, you just click and drag and you can dock it in like this. You can move it around. And this way it kinda always stays with your layout and After Effects, it lives with it. When you open it up next, it will always have it there. So this is what it looks like now. We don't have the drop down menu anymore. We have icons. And by default, it goes to the duration. So this is where you adjust the, uh, how long do you want the animation to be. And uh, notice we have some new changes here as well. So if you wanna go to anchor point, you can go over here, position, scale, rotation, opacity, uh, skew, tracking, blur, uh, duration, order, and ease. So again, just a simple click. That's all it takes, which is super handy. It's much quicker instead of just going to drop down menu. So that's change number one. And then change number two is this right here. So that's where a lot of it, um, I'll show you, let's, let's pretend like we're gonna, let's do the same animation. So let's do this. We're gonna uh, tell it to come in from the right side. So we're gonna say, let's do something like 1000. And then we wanna, remember we had like the arrows here to kind of push it on the other side. Well, now it's there over here. So as you can see, it kind of tells you, grabs this and puts, puts it in here. So that's what that means for. So boom, you push it in here. You can do the same thing. You can pull this value into here by clicking in here. So right now it's set to local. And because of that, it only affects the position, right? It doesn't apply to all. So that's cool. So then I can set this one to something like negative 1000. And uh, then we can go to opacity and set it to zero. We can pull it in for that as well. And uh, then easing, we can go to easing. And um, yeah, that looks good. Then I can just apply it like this, boom. And remember what I said before, we had all those controls visible, but now it automatically hides it, which is super handy. So now it looks uh, clean. It's not congested. So now if I preview this, you can see it's working quite well. You can adjust the ins and outs. So that's awesome. Now, what if I wanted to reverse it? I wanna come in maybe from, instead of this side, I wanna come in from this side over here. So look, watch how quickly I can do this. So I can just say, 
swap. That's a new thing that I've added. So you can do it locally or globally. I'm going to do it just locally. I can swap these two and maybe go to opacity here. Well, opacity is already there, so that's fine. And I can just run it like this. So now it's going to come in from this side and leave that side. Now, obviously, it's messed up because the order is messed up. So then we can go to order here. And we can say, hey, reverse this. So let's reverse both of these and then boom. And so now it's going to come in with that first. And that's so, yeah. Again, this tool for just what I just made now, I mean, if you had to do it manually with, uh, you know, kind of playing around yourself, it can take you some time to figure this out. But this one uh, is definitely much easier. And uh, order his has, has a new button here. So you can do based on characters. You can say, boom, it's going to do it based on characters instead of um, words. That's why actually I hesitated adding tracking because you can pretty much get the same effect using this. Okay, and uh, you can tell it to come in random. Boom, it will come in randomly. You can go to motion blur. Where is it at? Right here. And uh, on the X, we can crank this up. And let's see what that looks like. So yeah, it's very handy. This tool will save you a lot of time. I use this all the time. I, I think this tool is extremely useful. So again, global and local. I want to make sure you understand this. So uh, you can make any kind of changes. Let's say like this, like that. And you can... Uh, reset maybe everything, not just for the scale, you can reset it globally, you just say globally, reset everything in everything, boom, and everything will be reset. You can pull in everything, right? I can take this, maybe like reset everything first, and then I can globally pull in in value, so we can have the initial in animation, the opacity is going to be there. So again, these are the same buttons I showed you before, but you can control global or local. So you can do it locally or globally applied to all. I hope I, hope I made that clear. So that's really it. And in fact, uh, this whole um, like icon-driven tabs is something I'm considering for other tools that we have as well. The Smart Rect is another candidate for sure. A lot of you have been very vocal about this drop-down menu. I, I, I'm not a fan either, so I'm actually going to do the same thing I did here to uh, Smart Rect. So instead of size margin being in the drop-down menu, it's going to have icons, which will be much quicker. And, uh, I'm also thinking about adding so Smart Ease. I'm not sure if you're familiar, familiar with it. If you purchased uh, Smart Tools Bundle, Smart Ease comes with it. And I did um, create this preset stuff. So the presets uh, basically kind of helps you to save uh, you maybe you want to hold on to these values and you can say hey one you're going to be that and you know you can quickly go to one it will always be that so you can set things in the ui you can do the same thing or you will be able to do the same thing with uh, smart animator so i'm thinking about taking this and applying it here as well and maybe even smart rect uh, this way i like staying um kind of consistent with all my tools. So that way, like if you know how to use one tool, you, you can figure out the next one and so on. So I wanna make sure that we're consistent with that. Um, and so that's what I'm thinking about doing. Even like these buttons right here, you can see Smart Ease has them, uh, we have them in here. So I'm, I'm staying consistent with them for sure. And I'm probably gonna get rid of this and stay consistent with that as well. So that is really it as far as the tools go. Again, I want to thank you for purchasing our tools, for supporting us. We wouldn't be where we are uh, if it wasn't for awesome people like you guys. So we get to do what we love, and it's all because of you. So thank you. And if you want to be a part of our free mentoring group on Facebook, you should definitely do that by going to ukrami.com slash community. It's an amazing group of people who are always willing to help. And we have some giants of this industry rubbing shoulders with everybody. And they're super, super helpful. So definitely go to ukramedia.com slash community. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.